Hi, this is Shiva here for Ghost of Gamers at the Dota 2 Asia Championship, and I'm sitting here together with Rave Jo. Jo, how are you? Uh, good. How are you? I just got back from the hotel. Good. I'm also good, and I also want to. Won I'm wondering if you remember an interview at TI2 with me. Yeah, I guess I do. It was one of my first interviews, so I remember. <laughs> but you've gone a long way from there. Um, of course, at, the, at TI2, um, you didn't really get that far in the tournament. This is a whole different ball game. You are now in Korea for already for a long time. How are you? First, how are you enjoying Korea? Um, Korea is a pretty good place for uh, for living, actually. Um, because uh, you know, there's like other stuff you can uh, like besides gaming. There's other stuff to do, and it's been pretty fun. And uh, uh, as uh, as far as the practice goes, Korea is actually a good place because we can play Chinese teams, C teams, and American teams at the same time. Okay, that sounds pretty good. How are you in terms of? Can you speak Korean? Uh, can you speak the language? Um, I guess I could like understand or speak a little bit. I actually like had a tutor for like a month, and it was pretty ho helpful actually. <laughs> Do you do anything else? I mean, you're probably, you know, you're training a lot. Uh, what do you do outside of that? Do you, are you able to go out? Are you able to make yourself understandable enough to go out like that? Oh, yeah, definitely. Like, every time we, every, because uh, usually we schedule our um, our training. It's mostly, like, five days a week, and then the day the days, like, the days left, and we just, like, go out and, you know, have some fun, you know, like, go out at night. Okay, that sounds pretty good. Uh, so you came here to the Dota 2 Asia Championships. Uh, now you've been at the international before, so the scale of the event probably is not unfamiliar to you. How do you find the tournament on itself? Um, Tournament-wise, I think it's pretty much the same as TI. Um, but but I guess TI is still the best tournament, though, but this is like second to it. And it's been pretty well run by the or organizers, I mean. There's nothing like really I can complain. Nothing I can complain about about this tournament. It's been run pretty good. I've heard every team gets their own translator for when they need things. And I think you even got a pretty lady standing next to the booth if you need anything as well. Uh, for the first couple of days, we didn't have a translator, so it was like we had like trouble getting food. And you know, I'm not really used to the food here, so it gives me like a headache whenever like I try to order something and it's not what I expected it to be. So yeah, but past couple of days we've been finding some good places and it's not really that bad and the lady outside your booth does she does she is your assistant right like your t team's assistant um i don't know but there's been like different ladies out <laughs> out on our booth so i can't really keep track of that but i guess they're just standing there to like guard us or something <laughs> I'm sure she could throw a punch, but I'm not, not quite sure how hard that would be. Uh, so this tournament, you're already in the top six. You're doing amazingly well. Um, I would say you were one of the underdogs coming in. Do you feel like you were the underdogs? Um, I think f at most uh, I expected at least to be top eight. Right now, um, I think we've already like exceeded our expectations, and I feel really good about it. And then, um, I still think we've got a long way to go. I mean, like we're playing Big God next or like the best Chinese next to VG, I guess, right now. Do you feel like because Big God, uh, like they've revealed in interviews, like they haven't scrimmed that much, the maybe 10 or 7 to 10 scrims before the event started, is that scary for you? Or is that like extra, maybe gives you more confidence because they might not be as prepared as, uh, for example, VG Gaming would be? Um, I mean, like for this tournament too, we practiced for like a week. We had like uh, two months off. Like we went back to holidays and, and then we just sat down and said, hey, let's like, practice for like a week for DAC and you know we practice against like good teams like we EG and MVP and then, and then we felt really good coming into this tournament but the first day um, first day went really good for us and like during the middle middle like time of the group stages teams kind of started figures out and now we're like back and we've adapted more of a western play style I guess Western and plus Chinese place, I guess. So I guess we're like kind of like copycats. Oh, combining the best of both worlds, right? Yeah. Uh, that's pretty good. Uh, you had um, a loop of tiebreakers too, actually. I think it was it scheduled to have it like infinite loops until a winner came out. Um, it was agreed upon the first day, first day of tiebreakers. If it's a one-one between the three teams, then we'd have to play tomorrow. We'd have to play tiebreakers again tomorrow and. If it still becomes 1-1-1 one, one, one in the second day, then we'll have to go for time rating. And I think in the first game we managed to like get the best time rating out of the teams. We got like 34 minutes, and then 
like the second game, the last game we played with in tiebreakers, C deck was like forced to play like a push shred, something they're not used to. And, you know, it was like easy to see from there what they were up to. Okay, were you worried at any point then during the tiebreakers? I mean, obviously you're fighting with three teams for one place. I mean, of course the pressure is always there, but you know, we're professional players. We the only way to like um, go through pressure is like to get used to it. During a TI2, I remember that you had your whole family with you. They were wearing JO shirts and everything, and it was it was a sight to see. Are they here now? In China, no. <laughs> you never know. Ever, I mean, I mean, I just got back from Canada. I came from Canada to here, so I mean, they're like watching the games and here and there, and they've been supporting me a lot. And uh, hopefully, if we get to TI5, I guess they'll come too. I guess that's a shorter way. It's a bit more realistic that way. I guess so. <laughs> So, uh, so far, uh, what do you think? You, I mean, you played a lot of matches. You were probably one of the teams that played most matches because of the tiebreakers. What do you think about the format of the tournament, the amount of games you played during the group stages, and uh, maybe also the, the double elimination bracket in the, on the main stage? Um, I think it's good that we came from the loser's bracket because that way, um, um, whatever put us there in the first place, we learn from those mistakes, and then teams are like, the thing that's good about loser bracket is that we played the loser from the winners bracket, so so obviously they have like a they have like a motivation issues. I mean like a momentum, yeah, morale issues, and we come from like a win, then the other team we play comes from a loss, and it goes from there. It's like it's like common in like every every competition. So so you're I mean obviously it might not be preferable for loser bracket, but it's 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 giving you a good feeling. I mean. Yeah, it's like the, probably the only advantage that loser bracket has, and we're probably like taking advantage of it, I guess. Well, that's the only way to do it, I guess, as well. Um, so, what's uh, what's in store for you? I mean, uh, so far the Chinese is having a sh are having a shuffle after New Year, but Rave has been together for quite a while already, and I don't think there are any roster shuffles on the horizon. But can you tell us anything about Rave's future? Um, I mean, like roster changes is always going to be on the back of our heads. I mean, if we're not happy with our result, then I guess why not, right? But as of, as of now, we're not really thinking about it. We're just trying to focus on this tournament. And after the tournament, you're gonna, of course, go. Well, you're gonna be going back home. What's it, what's in store for you? Like you've been a competitive player for a while already. What's your next step? Um, for now, I just want to win. I guess I'll keep working as hard as I can until the year ends. Mm -hmm. And after that, I'll probably like step away from gaming, like go back to school or something. No, no coaching. Um, I guess from a little, I mean, I kind of coached this team actually, like, okay. you know, I picked these guys, I mean, they called me up and they were l relatively like four, four, five K MMR players and like what, like a, where they're at now. I mean, yeah. You brought them uh, a long way. Actually, uh, I saw an interview with Ninja Boogie today and he said that he was expecting top five in the tournament. Well, I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I guess he was being too cocky, but um, top eight's like fine for me. Like, yeah. Is it actually difficult that you have got uh, two different, uh, three different nationalities, sorry, Canadian, U.S., and uh, Philippines? Does it does it create any any kind of communication issues in the team? I mean, citizenship-wise, I'm Canadian, but ethnic ethnicity-wise, I'm Filipino. So we use our um, the Filipino language. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We use, there's no communication. Uh, N Ninja Boogie has uh, got like shared passport and everything, right? Is that? Yeah. He, he's he has, his dad is American and his mom is Filipino, but he doesn't look any bit of Filipino. So I guess <laughs> that's why people assume we're like having like communication issues. But no, we all speak the same language when we're playing. Okay, that sounds solid. Um, so you're going to go up against Big God, which, as you said, is going to be very scary. Now, this interview will probably be online already afterwards, so people will already know the results. But, but how do you feel going into the game? How do you think you'll do, and how do you think uh, your team will handle the pressure? Um, honestly, I have no expectations. I'll just do my best. Okay, well, thank you for taking the time for this interview. You are going to go into the match, so uh, I wish you good luck. Uh, thank you. Thanks for the interview.